Hello everyone, welcome to Dimension Quest. This week I'm doing some updates to my home lab. So today's video is focused on the recently released ESXi 8.0 initial availability. In August of 2022, VMware announced vSphere 8, and on October 11th announced the initial availability release. If you want to work with vSphere in your lab environment, you may have some older hardware with CPUs that are no longer supported by ESXi, as is the case here in my lab. I have a couple six-year-old Intel Nooks that I still use. Fortunately, there's a workaround that lets us install ESXi on this older hardware. Obviously, this is not supported and certainly not recommended for a production environment. But if you simply want to get your hands on the new version and work with it for educational or lab purposes, this video can help you with that. Let's get started by registering for our free ESXi 8.0 license. Head over to VMware's Customer Connect Eval Center here. Once you get to that page, you can register for your free ESXi 8.0 license by clicking the Register Here link on the right. Note that you'll need to be logged in, and this does not require any kind of credit card information. You'll be prompted to fill out a short form. After that, you'll be presented with a page containing your license key details, as well as a link to download the ESXi 8.0 image and offline bundle used for upgrades. Copy your license and store it in a secure place. You'll need it in order to use ESXi 8 for more than 60 days, which is the default unlicensed evaluation period. The license you receive will not have an expiration date. Finally, download the vSphere hypervisor, which is the ESXi ISO image. Once you've gotten it downloaded, you'll need to get that ISO into a bootable format. My preference here is to use one of my Ventoy boot USB sticks, since this is the easiest option. You simply insert your Ventoy USB disk into the system that has downloaded the ISO, then drag the ISO onto the USB disk and eject it. You're now ready to install on your physical system. In my case, I'm booting from USB on a 2016 Intel Nook, which is the model Nook 6 i5 SYH with 32 gigs of memory, an NVMe drive, and one terabyte SSD. So let's go ahead and get this booted, and I'll show you what happens when you do not do the workaround on an older CPU. Here's my Ventoy boot disk. I'll just go down and select the VMware VM Visor installer, and I'll do a normal boot. And here, there was a the little menu down at the bottom there. I did not press any keys. I just let this go ahead and boot. Okay, it's ready to do the install, so we'll just go ahead and press enter. Then we'll do F11. We'll select our Toshiba NVMe and press enter. And we want to install ESXi and overwrite any data stores. So I select that and hit enter. Now I want to select my keyboard, enter my appropriate root password here, and press enter to continue. And here we go, CPU underscore support error. The CPU in this host is not supported by ESXi 8. So that's what happens when you don't do the workaround. You, you just, you can't proceed. So we'll go ahead and we will boot again, and we'll select our USB disk here, the Samsung flash drive. And we hit enter, and our Ventoy bootloader will load up here. We'll go down and select the VMware VMVisor installer again. Now this time, we boot into normal mode, and as soon as this little menu pops up here at the bottom, we want to press Shift and the letter O. 
then we want to make sure we have a space at the end of the line down there and put allow legacy CPU equals true. Once you've got that in there, hit enter and we'll continue with the boot process. Okay, we'll go ahead and hit enter and F11. Again, we'll select the Toshiba NVMe, hit enter. And we'll hit enter again. We're letting it overwrite the existing data on the disk there. Select our language, enter our root password. Once we've confirmed it, we hit enter again. And this time we only get a warning and, and we're allowed to continue. Now we're getting one more confirmation and we hit the install. Okay, and we'll just hit enter to reboot and I'll remove my USB disk. All right, so now we need to hit F2 to customize the system. We need to tell it what its IP address is. I wanna disable IPv6 since I'm not using that here in the home lab and I need to give it DNS information. So let's start by configuring the management network. Now I do need to set a VLAN on here because of the switch that I'm connected to. So I'll set that to 207. Now for IPv4, I wanna change that to static IP. And I have a DNS entry for this 207.31. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that, put in the correct mask and my default gateway. Once I'm done, I'll hit enter for okay. Now I'll go down to IPv6. We'll change that to disabled, enter. DNS configuration, we wanna change that to specified details. My DNS server is 207.10, so I'm putting that in here. And for my host name, I'm gonna set that to nook1.lab.asbil.dev, which matches my DNS entry in my home environment here. Custom DNS suffix, so again, I wanna put lab.asbil.dev and hit enter, okay. Now hit escape and then I hit yes to do a reboot. Okay, the server is up and ready for use. So now if you have home DNS, you can use the DNS address or the IP address in my case, I went to nook1.lab.asbil.dev forward slash UI in my browser. I accepted the warning message there about not being secure because it is using a self-signed certificate. For the login, you wanna use the username root with whatever password you set when you installed ESXi. We can see here, we've got the new host client available here, much cleaner, nice looking client. And we see that I am not connected to a vCenter now, I've already gone ahead and entered a license for this. So we're all set and I did use the license, my free license as, um, as I noted earlier in the beginning there, there we go. I've blurred it out because that is issued to me and it does not expire. All right, we'll click over to this Fedora 37 VM. I just got done installing this a, a couple days ago. Now between the ESX being up and me accessing the UI here, that was a few days after the installation had been completed, simply from a scheduling perspective. So I have this Fedora 37 preview build installed and working here. So we're gonna power it up and just access the internet, make sure that things are actually working here. So I'll get logged in as my dev user one. There we go. 
We've got our GNOME interface there. We'll open up Firefox. And let's just go ahead and click on one of these links here to make sure it's not something cached. And there we go. So there you have it. We got our free version of ESXi 8 for home and lab use. Got the registration completed for that, got it downloaded. We saw how to boot up from a USB stick and enter the appropriate legacy CPU option there to allow us to use an older CPU. And we can see that um, here in the host client, we do have the ability to create VMs, uh, manage the VMs, create snapshots, revert to snapshots, manage things. So all in all, we have a, a functional home lab environment here that we can work with. Thanks for joining me this week. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like, subscribe, and tell your colleagues and coworkers about it. Thank you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.